Okay, well, thank you everyone for joining us uh, for You Don't Ask, You Don't Get. Um, I'm gonna introduce Dr. Patillo. She has many accolades, um, which needs really no introduction. Um, she's wonderful. If you're in this program, you know how great she is. Um, and we're very excited to hear her talk all about job negotiations and um, basically how to get what you want uh, after grad school. So Dr. Patillo, if you wouldn't mind, take it away. Hello, hello, hello. I'll go ahead and share my screen. Make you all bigger. Um, feel free to leave your cameras on. This is nice. Hi. Hey, y'all. I see lots of familiar faces and names. Hey. Um, to get started, I'd like to say I'm calling in from the traditional territories of the Salagi and Soyaha peoples, and I'm feeling like it's Wednesday. It's Wednesday. <laughs> Still energized, but wow. Yes, ready to um, try to get over the hump day. So actually a friend of mine is starting to call this uh, Widow Wednesday. Yeah. So let's see, who is in the room? Who do we have here? Why are y'all here? What are you here for? What are your expectations? Oh, thank you, Amy. This outfit came from Guinea, West Africa. Yes. Um, I know myself, I'm I'm kind of a baby and I would like to know, I've never had to negotiate or anything. I've never been in um, that good of a position job-wise. And so I just kind of like to know how that works. Okay. I mean, I'm personally super awkward all of the time. So having these kind of conversations of like, hey, Let's talk about pay is always so weird for me. So I like to have like the skill sets of like, basically, here's how you say it. Here's how to kind of approach that. Cool, cool. Anybody else want to share? Yeah, and feel free to use the chat as well. Ooh, have a couple of offers. Maybe we should play with Kim. On the job hunt, yeah. So... Thank you all for sharing. <laughs> yeah, having multiple job offers can be fun. So my first employer, um, University of Houston, uh, and John Laner, John Laner, he was head of HR at the time, HR in the libraries. And he was the one that taught me to negotiate. Um, it was fantastic. I thought, I didn't know any of this stuff. Um, and he was, he was just, he just shared. And actually, um, sort of related to that, I, um, my first employer uh, did a lot of training for, for new, um, new hires. And I, I don't think I've seen a situation like that since. <clears throat> so, if you're lucky enough to get employed in an institution where they take onboarding and training of their early career professional seriously, that is awesome. Okay. So that was my experience. And so I'm happy to share um, that stuff with y'all. Now, I will say this. These um, principles and practices I'm going to share are useful for negotiating initial salaries as well as negotiating stuff throughout your tenure um, at that same employer, okay? So it's not just a one-time thing, right? You wanna sort of have on your negotiating attitude, shall we say, all the time, all the time. Um, and you may know, and again, let me, looking at people in the room, looks like we, we have a couple of gentlemen. Um, this is for you also but I just want to remind you that there's lots of a data available about how 
um, there's a pay gap, right, for women in probably all industries, right? And certainly also in the information professions. So we want to do what we can to help mitigate that. All right, so I wanna give you some, again, some tools and techniques. Um, all right. So again, yes, we are talking about negotiating. I, I love this phrase, you don't ask, you don't get. Okay, I've been using it all my life. Um, well, all my career anyway. And gotta advance my slide. This is what we're gonna talk about. Okay. Preparation, some techniques and some issues, what you can negotiate, and then I'll give you some resources. Okay. So first of all, um, a negotiation is a conversation. Okay, it is not a fight, it's not a confrontation. And you feel like it's going to be, right? You can even, you can feel it um, in your body that you tense up, tighten up when um, it's time to ask for what you want, okay? Hopefully, again, we're gonna equip you so that you can breathe and relax a little bit. It, it should not be a confrontation. It should be a conversation, all right? Um, and I should say this, again, as I go along, if you wanna ask a question, raise your hand, that would be great if you want to speak, or just throw it in the chat, all right? So preparation. And yeah, I'm trying to, I don't want to make this like a class, all right? So type up, um, I'm gonna ask for some audience participation soon too. All right, so preparation. Try to remember that um, this is about business, okay? Leave your egos and your emotions out of it. And that's not easy to do. And one of the things you can do is sort of practice, you know, do some role playing. Um, but leave your ego out of it, all right? Do ask for the moon, but be okay with getting no as an answer, right? So don't go run and, and hide and, and cry under your pillow if you get a no. Um, it's okay to get a no. Um, again, with some of these tools and techniques, you'll be able to go run away, figure some things out and then come back, all right? But do come in with the, the attitude of um, leaving that ego at the door. So you want to know the market, okay? People, a lot of people like to say, know your worth, right? And I think, yes, we need to know our worth, but we also need to know the market that we're getting into. Um, what are the employers looking for, right? And what are the trends that are going through the different parts of our information professions? You need to be sort of on top of that. And that's, you know, knowing what the employers are looking for. How many of you have heard of um, COLI or C-O-L-I? You know what that means. Okay. Oh, sorry, I forgot to turn this off. Okay, that's a bunch of nothing. All right, so <laughs> COLI is cost of living index. Cost of living index. Okay, um, and there's also a COLA, cost of living um, adjustments. All right, so when I say know your market, you need to know also sort of geographically, geographically and regionally, um, what do people pay you know, in a particular region? And you need to know the comparable salaries, right? So both for the position, um, for the organization, and for the region. Then you can figure out, well, what you're worth in that particular context, okay? Um, next, again, in terms of preparation is knowing yourself. All right, so what are you good at? 
Do you know what you're good at? Do y'all know what you're good at? I should ask you, give me a Y or an N in the in the in the chat if you know what you're good at. Okay, all right, all right. I see some yeses. I see y'all. Yeah, thank you. Give some, I need some honesty, right? <laughs> well, sometimes no, we don't always know what we're good at. Um, at least not all of it. And so it can be good to ask someone who knows you and who knows the market. Okay. Um, I know when I was um, in your shoes, I had this really strong interest in um, cataloging and organization of information. And one of my mentors let me know that that was not the kind of career I wanted to pursue and that I needed to be in public services. Um, so it was very helpful to to have someone else sort of give me a clue about um, what they perceived that I was good at and how it would fit into you know, the market. You also need to know what conditions um, you need for a positive work environment. So again, I want y'all to think about that and share some of those in the chat. What do you need to have a, a work environment that's conducive to your um, contentment. I won't say happiness, but contentment. I know for one, I need a desk that goes up and down. I know that's a silly one, but that's one of the things that we need. Um, let's see. Okay, so don't like working from home. A, yeah, good. A supportive manager. Okay, leave and flexibility, clear expectations. Oh, room personality, yeah. If you are good at something, but you don't necessarily enjoy it, should you still advertise it to an employer? Oh, that's a good question. All right, I'm gonna talk about what I, what I consider alignment. Um, with values um, in a second. And that's where I think that falls. And see a positive and welcoming environment, a balance between independence and collaboration, okay? Feedback, good communication, clear expectations. Yeah, okay, thank you for sharing that. Um, yeah, so again, it's important to know what you need. Um, as you prepare to do your negotiations. And finally, on this particular um, slide, in terms of preparation, it's important to know what's non-negotiable. Okay, so again, what's non-negotiable for you? Um, you may have, for example, a minimum salary amount. Um, location might be, you know, important. Um, I think it was, yeah, Amy who said not working from home, right? That might be non-negotiable. Um, work hours might be non-negotiable, accommodations, um, et cetera. But I also want you to think about well, what's non-negotiable non -negotiable for the employer. And sometimes, again, especially when you're on the outside, you don't know that, right? And you think about, well, how can you find out? So for instance, um, one of the things that I really don't like about um, how organizations operate sometimes is they don't give salary ranges, right? So you're applying for a job and you have no idea what the salary is. And so when you sort of get to the point where you have to negotiate a salary, you know, you might be up here, but their range is down here and you didn't know that in advance. Yes, that is, it drives me crazy too. Well, there might be ways you can get, especially for public um, organizations, you can actually access um, things like uh, job classifications. Um, if you do a good search on the web or know how to get to their um, human resources, um, you know, department stuff, or even to call them and ask them, you know, what's the salary range for that kind of position? Um, other things that you need to know is if there's some collective bargaining agreements, then that means that you might not be able to negotiate things um, like salaries um, on your own. 
There are also some issues related to things like salary compression um, and equity that um, organizations want to, you know, avoid. So if you, again, you were requesting a higher salary than, say, they're paying other people in similar roles, then they might have to say no if they want to, um, you know, remain equitable across employers, employees, excuse me. And so, again, that's the kind of thing that you may not know um, off the bat, but it's, it is important for you to think about there are some things that are non-negotiable for the employer as well. All right. And I'll say, I'll just say, I'm going to time out. Um, I thought, then, uh, yeah, hey, uh, Dr. Marisa just popped in. Sorry, Dr. Patella. <laughs> yes, yes, thank you so much. I'm I'm so sorry. I've I've had an urgent meeting, so I had to attend to. I couldn't join at four. Hi, everybody. Uh, thank you for Dr. Patello. I'm sure this is going to be an inspiring speech. I wish I could listen to it the whole time. <laughs> um, but but I have a couple of things to finish. But thank you for um, you know doing this. And I hope everybody participates and everybody benefits for this. This is an important topic. So thank you. Thank you. I see some great, great students of ours, uh, our great student leaders, and um, it's great to see everybody. Um, so I'm going to listen a bit. And then if I leave, it's not because Dr. Patillo's speech is excellent as always, but because I have something urgent I need to attend to. So thank you, Dr. Patillo. Yep. Back Absolutely. You. Thank you, uh, Thank Dr. You. Yeah. Thanks for popping in. Yeah. Um, all right. So next on the agenda, just to throw out some some um, some techniques and some issues um, that are you know relevant to negotiating. Okay. So negotiation is expected. So I have a lot of uh, folks, especially students, ask me, "Well, should I negotiate?" Yes, absolutely. I think at this point, um, with most employers, there's an expectation that you're going to negotiate, okay? So again, let that, let that sink in and just be prepared, be relaxed. You're going to negotiate. Um, it may or may not be for salary, and so we're going to talk about that too. But no, negotiation is expected. You want to ask with confidence, but also with humility, right? Not arrogance or demands. One of the things I want to remind you about is you may be candidate number three out of three, okay? So you may be the last one that they contacted about this. So if you go in making demands, they're probably going to be like, nah, we'll take a pass, <laughs> okay? So... Um, do go in with confidence and humility. Um, as I said earlier, try to identify the salary range prior to applying. Sometimes folks, they don't want to release that information, but if you can, that can be really useful. Um, deflect any salary conversations before you have an offer. Okay, let me say that again. Deflect any salary conversations before you have an offer. If they ask you things like, what are your salary demands while you're interviewing? Deflect it. Deflect it. All right, let me say that question. Yeah, they ask what you expect for a salary. Mm hmm mm hmm You say you're open to negotiate. And if you're doing it face-to-face, -face, I mean, if that happens to you, you know, they ask you a question face-to-face, -face, you, can, you can flip it on them and say, what do you expect? I mean, what do you plan? You know, what's your range? If it's face to face, if it's on a form, it can always be tricky um, to take the risk to leave it blank. Um, but I like that open to negotiate. Again, if they allow you to fill that in, can a company legally decide not to hire you after offering a position if you ask to negotiate? All right, I'm not a lawyer. I know we have one in the room. 
<laughs> so maybe maybe that question can be answered um, by somebody in the room. Um, but I think in terms of practice, um, yeah, offers can be rescinded. Offers have been rescinded, absolutely. And it may not necessarily be because you asked to negotiate. Um, it could be. It could be for a lot of other reasons. Um, but that legal question, don't hold me to that in terms of legality, okay? Um, we need to consult a lawyer for that. But yeah, so Amy, yeah, if you could write it in, yeah, I like I like that answer you gave about open to negotiate. Um, so again, in terms of you're going to negotiate, here's a suggestion. Channel the most confident person, animal, or creature you know who knows their worth, who has calm confidence, and usually gets what they want, but not through force. Okay, channel that entity. I always channel my Aunt Bernice um, when I need some, some confidence and some, hey, of course you're worth it. But again, not going in with, um, with arrogance, um, but confidence. Okay, and here's another really key point. Upon receiving an offer, actually, let me ask y'all. What do you do when you receive an offer? What do you think you should do when you receive an offer? Jump up and <laughs> Yes. So I see, I like the, <laughs> like the answers in the chat. Yes, ask for time. Ask for time. You know, and some, some employers want to, you know, push you. Ask for an hour even. Okay. Um, and honestly, my take now is if the organization can't wait an hour for me to think about an offer, I probably don't want to work there. Okay. Especially if I'm talking to the hiring manager. I, yeah. So yes, ask for time before responding. I think you can push it to at least 24 hours, maybe even more. And Dr. Rorisa might have a comment about that. I don't know. Um, but um, do ask for time. How much time, again, is going to also be negotiable, okay? All right. So Deja suggests, yeah, take it right away if it's actually what you want. Actually, I, honestly, I would say still step away, at least give yourself a pause. Give yourself time to absorb it. Talk to your loved ones. Um, I would never automatically take the offer, even if it's what I wanted. <laughs> and again, it doesn't necessarily mean you have to go ask for more, but do go pause, pull yourself away and do some thinking. Yeah, thank you, Deja. Yeah, for sharing that, yep. <laughs> Doc, thank you, Dr. Marisa. We all say saw his response in the chat. Take as much time as you need, right? But don't take too long. Awesome. All right, so the next sort of category of technique or and or issue is about building your network. So we all need a personal board of directors, okay? That's maybe, what, three to five folks with different um, skills, maybe even different personalities and experiences to help us to guide us, to mentor us, to be sounding boards, um, to be part, to be your personal board of directors. Key. And I'll tell you as someone who's, you know, I'm getting old. I, I counted up actually recently. I've had a 25 year career <clears throat> in um, library information science. My board of directors has changed over time. Okay. So that will happen as well. Um, people will move you know, sort of in and out of these roles, but do create your, your board, all right? 
um, they'll help you um, evaluate these offers in particular. It's also important to build strategic relationships within an organization, okay? Um, this helps you sort of understand what's possible, okay? And also it can help leadership to get to know you, okay? Again, you wanna be moving and shaking around the organization, folks need to see you. Um, there's a, a new poll out, I guess it came out in the fall, about um, millennials and Gen Z um, and their engagement in the workplace. And um, I haven't really read the entire um, study, but what folks found is a lack of you know engagement for those um, populations in the workplace is going down. And you can imagine if you're not engaged, say with senior members of an organization, you know, you're missing the opportunity to make some connections, right? That might help you advance your career. So I encourage you to, again, make those strategic um, relationships in the organizations that you're in and certainly in the organizations that hire you. Um, Cause again, they're gonna help you know what to ask for and what you can possibly get. All right, be, be strategic. And this is where I think, I think it was Deja that mentioned, well, I can't remember now. I would put a lot of stuff in the chat. Um, well, I said I was gonna talk about aligning your values with your career um, moves. So do be strategic and align your attention with your intentions. Align your attention with your intentions. So aligning your career plans with your values, I think, will be your guiding star. You don't have to have a goal to be the Librarian of Congress in order to become the Librarian of Congress. You don't have to have just that as your goal, right? But if you are making the right moves, um, connecting with the right people, your, your path will be made for you. So follow opportunities that align with your values. Okay, and your intuition if you're in touch with yourself. If you're not in touch with yourself, you probably don't have any intuition. Um, but you'll, you might gain that over time if you haven't. Learn to say yes to some opportunities that will move you forward. Okay, so learn to say yes. Um, again, when I, went, when I was in your shoes, I probably said yes to almost everything. And then when I had some um, trepidation, I would go ask my Aunt Bernice, what should I do? <laughs> should I say yes to this? Um, but on the flip side of that, you need to say no to, you need to learn how to say no. Um, say no to opportunities, especially that don't align with your values. Okay, so again, even when you're negotiating, right? And folks want to offer you stuff that you maybe didn't ask for. <laughs> Say no, if the stuff does not um, align with your values. And also, I mean, by that, I mean, too, also, if it doesn't fit in terms of your time, okay? Say no, no is a complete sentence. And I want to remind you too, it's not always about um, money, right? Or a title or a position, unless that's what's important to you. You know, so a title might be important to you. Um, I would argue or I would submit that for me anymore, a title is not important. I probably care more about money <laughs> and freedom and freedom. All right. Um, okay, I want to say uh, especially about uh, keep asking and getting. Okay, and again, y'all can y'all can read that. But be aware of um, 
taking on extra responsibilities. So do not take on extra or interim responsibilities unless there's some extra compensation or an adjusted workload and or an agreed upon ending. Okay, yeah, I know this happens especially to early career folks. Um, you start the job and somebody says, oh, so-and-so is off on some kind of leave or can you take this on? And again, because earlier I just said, say yes. You can say yes to stuff, right? But if you say yes, put some conditions on it. Okay, say, yeah, I'll, I'm willing to take it on without extra compensation. When does it end? And get that stuff in writing. Okay, don't listen. Don't have the attitude of being of feeling sorry for your organization. Don't feel sorry for them. Okay, this is a business transaction. Business. All right. What what to negotiate? So now is your opportunity to tell me what you're going to negotiate. What kinds of things do you think we can negotiate? <laughs> yeah, don't feel sorry for them. Work won't love you back, right? There's and there's a book in that title. That, that it's not gonna love you back. Nope. Um, um, vacation days, PTO, yes. Autonomy and schedule, yes. Yep. Salary schedule and benefits. A hybrid work schedule. Yep. Yep. All right, those are good. Those are good. Let's see, what are we leaving out? Relocation money, right? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Thank you, Caroline, for that one. I like that one. mileage all right Deja <laughs> oh. so Kim you negotiated the possibility of a 10-month contract for the same pay yes nice memberships to professional organizations yeah yeah so again depending upon what's important for you what will make conditions you know, positive for you in the workplace. Those are the things you can negotiate. Yep, there you go, Kelsey. Yep. You can you can be very creative when it comes to negotiating, right? Um, yep, gym memberships, mental health assistance. Yep, higher education costs, tuition, all of that. All of that is negotiable. Now, I will say this. It's best to negotiate, do this stuff you know, as part of your initial appointment, right? Um, and for those of you, um, because once you, you know, once you get started, once you get kind of stuck in a certain groove, um, so at a certain salary, for instance, it can it can be more difficult to to go back and have some stuff sort of corrected, right? So think of what you need as much as you can before you take that job. Um, there's something else always going on. Now I can't remember. So again, y'all mentioned a lot of great things. Um, in fact, do I have anything you didn't mention? Maybe I don't think I don't think anybody mentioned things like technology or computing environment, that kind of thing. Um, again, some of them might not be as serious as others, but I'm a Mac person. If you put me on a PC. I'm going to not be able to function. And so one of the things I usually negotiate, <laughs> the bishop's laughing at me, um, is a Macintosh environment, okay? Um, I think one, I can't remember if this came up, start date. Um, one SIS grad was, was grappling with this um, 
last May and didn't realize they could negotiate that. Yeah. So if they say, you know, oh, we need you to start May 1, well, you're not done May 1, right? You still have um, final projects to turn in, grades to receive, commencement to do. Um, ask them if you can start, you know, June 1. You can definitely um, ask to negotiate start date. All right. So, and again, y'all can continue to make comments and ask questions too, but I wanted to make sure you knew about a couple of resources um, that might take some of your time, okay? But I think it's really useful. So there are two of them that are um, courses or webinars. So this first one here is from the AAUW, which is the American Association of University Women. Right, so remember at the beginning I talked about this, um, there's a pay gap for women, especially at um, university um, employees. So the AAUW is an advocacy group. Um, one of the things they did was put together this work smart and start smart salary negotiation um, course. All right. So it's again, it's primarily for women in higher education, but it's really for anyone. All right. And I've I've gone through it. Um, it's um, I think it's useful for everybody. So again, I want to make sure you're aware of that. Um, and then there's there's this really cool course of when negotiations more than money, how to negotiate almost anything. So this is available through, oh, and sh I'm sorry, by the way, the, the one I just mentioned, the AAUW one, is free, okay, no cost. Um, this one is available through LinkedIn. And now, as you, as you all know, we have a LinkedIn learning, hope you know, we have a LinkedIn learning, um, you know, offered through UT Knoxville. So you should be able to, to access this for free. Um, it's actually... Uh, kind of like a three hour uh, course, but the the teacher um, whose picture you see there, um, I think he's quite good. You don't have to listen to the whole thing. You listen to the parts that are, um, you know, sort of applicable to you. Um, but he talks about, yeah, how, you, how to negotiate almost anything. And I think it's really good. So if you get a chance, check that out too. All right, and then I wanted to give you some, some resources that sort of address, especially the preparation part, okay? So preparing yourself, getting all the information that you, you need to know the market um, that you're going to be negotiating with them. So that first one to the left there is um, just an example. Do you all know that you can, um, thank you, Amy, for putting that in the chat. Do you all know that you can go see public employees' salaries? Do y'all know that? Yeah, now I can't say it's 100% because I haven't checked every single state, but certainly every state I've worked in, um, yeah. And as I love the way Tennessee puts it, transparent Tennessee. So you can see what people are making. Now, the caveat is those databases are not always 100% up to date, okay? Um, they could be, you know, a year behind, but you can get some idea about um, the salaries for certain positions, okay? And of course, plenty of people look and see because they want to see how much, uh, you know, their colleagues are making, if their colleagues are making more money than them, et cetera. All right, the one going clockwise, the MLIS skills at work. Again, I mentioned that you need to know um, what employers are looking for, right? And also sort of what you know how to do. Um, San Jose State University's School of Information does a wonderful service for our professions every year. And they um, analyze the job postings every spring. They do a sample of the jobs out there. And then they, you know, interpret all this data and create this snapshot of job postings that include, you know, what soft skills people are looking for, what LIS skills they're looking for, um, et cetera. Okay, so it can be really useful 
um, in terms of figuring out, you know, how you fit what employers are looking for. Again, continuing clockwise, um, Glassdoor. So I just put that as an example. You don't have to go to Glassdoor necessarily, but um, this kind of resource can be useful for learning about industries, right? So let's say you've got um, an organization that you're interested in and um, you wanna know how they treat their employees. You know, what's, what, what are their you know, compensation sort of policies and how do people, people feel about working there? You can go to Glassdoor and check out that, those kinds of questions about particular um, companies and industries. Um, the next one there is the cost of living calculator. Yeah, I didn't want to give a specific one. I thought that one was pretty because it had some pretty pictures. There are tons of um, cost of living calculators, but here's the key thing. You want to make sure that they're using good data. So um, there's, yeah, it was. You want to make sure that they're using that data. ACCRA or ACRA. Um, um, the one I tend to go to is bankrate.com. Um, I think the one I got the image from is payscale.com or something like that. Um, but they should, if they don't tell you where they're getting their data, don't use them. Okay. But there are many cost of living uh, calculators out there that give you that cost of living information. And then the last piece there um, at the bottom is a lib guide put together by our business librarian that is um, gives you access to a bunch of different economic indicators, okay? So again, all of these sort of things we've been talking about, um, there are all kinds of databases and um, you know information out there. And I think you know uh, the lib guide does a pretty good job of giving us access to the things that are you know often behind a paywall. So, I mean, if you want to do a deep dive on that stuff, we have you know, a business librarian who could probably help you. All right. What questions do y'all have? Was that bankrate.com? I didn't catch that last part that you said. I put it in the chat. Yes, bankrate.com. I go there for a lot of stuff. See, you know, what the interest rates are on, you know, money market accounts and all kinds of stuff like that. They have a pretty good one. Go ahead, Kim. Um, my question is, and this might be too specific of a question, but say you've received an offer. Um, what's the best way to approach coming back and saying, yes, I'm very interested in this position, but I would like to ask for this. Um, how do you word it? Uh, and I know it partially depends on whether you're responding by email or if you're responding in person, but do you have any suggestions or advice? You mean if you like want more money, for instance? Um, yes, more money is the hard one. I find it easier. I mean, and not that I have a lot of experience, but when I have bounced a few ideas back with um, potential employers about, um, like I've had a situation where they've given a salary um, for the, the job. It's very low but they say we are absolutely unable to offer anymore because of our um, situation and, and, and it's come down from the administration. So that's when then I've, I've been able to suggest, okay, are you open to a flexible work schedule? Are you open to um, you know, a, an 11 or 10 month contract? And mm -hmm. I've had some success there, but I guess it is money. How do you go about saying, I'm sorry, this isn't enough. Should you should you actually name a higher amount? Do you bring in offers that came to you from other universities or other positions? How would you go about it? Um, let 
one of the things, again, I think I, I mentioned it, like I tried to address some of it. Let me, let me stop the share. Um, is, you know, one thing you could bring up is what you've done um, in the past to, you know, improve um, work at previous organizations, right? To really demonstrate that your, um, what your skills are and how you've, um, you know, how your performance has improved um, whatever it is at, at a different organization. Um, that might help. But again, sometimes it's knowing that, well, they might be telling the truth also that they can't um, do a different salary. And again, you've come up with other ways in which to um, maybe to get what you need, right? Um, but a lot of it is, is actually saying, you know, um, that particular salary um, doesn't sort of meet what you're asking for, you know, in terms of responsibilities um, and also my expertise. And again, you 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 do still have to sort of um, you know have some understanding that sometimes the the organization is willing to take a less experienced person if you're going to cost them more. Okay, so it can be really important again for you to say this is what I've done for other organizations. This is what my skill set is, and this is what that is worth. And yeah, you can propose um an amount and sometimes again it's a negotiation right just like when you're going to buy a car you might want to shoot higher right and then expect a counter offer from them but sometimes you have to be willing to to really get into into the back and forth into that conversation and, and what what other ideas does anybody else have? Like, again, y'all are y'all are experienced too. Some of you, mm. feel free to to share. Thanks, Gina. Good to see you. Go ahead, Deja. I was just gonna say, like, to Ken's question. Um, there's like multiple folds too, because you may want to also, and I say this with experience of working in career services and undergrad, and now I'm in career services now um, on, the, in, on the employer side, but the, the thing too is making sure whether or not they asked you what your salary was before, because sometimes if they already know that information, they're not going to either, either they understand that you've already been used to that amount of pay, if it's the same around the same amount, or um, they'll consider like, well, if you were paid this much, you know, like we, maybe we can, if we lower it, that's fine or whatever else. And same kind of what you were saying, your skills, depending upon your skills. But um, one of the things too, that may be good not to discount is that if you really like the position, but it's not being paid what you wanted, now you actually know what positions you should be applying for because you've already seen that you like this particular thing well, what is this job paying at a totally different place and just going with that other place? Because sometimes it is budget. They just don't have the ability to do that. And it might not even be the person. It's literally like whoever else up above in a whole different different state at headquarters, like they don't even know who you are mm -hmm. to care that you want more pay, which is just unfortunate. Um, so sometimes just those, those positions are vacant. For a long time until like you said they find someone who doesn't really care hasn't had a you know job that's paid more and it's a good opportunity for them and they just take that person so 
I think it is good to just tell yourself like, hey, you know, this isn't going to work and just move on and not feel bad about that and not feel like, I think we're, it's so easy to tell ourselves like, oh, if I turned it down at this great institution that cares so much and has great values and I should work for them. No, if it's not going to work, it's not going to work. And that's okay. Like just being honest about that. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yep. Well, and, and thank you, Ariel, for that quote from your partner. <laughs> Thank you, but a salary in this range would make it much easier for me to accept. Yeah. Thanks for stopping by, Victoria. Um, so related to honestly what Deja was sort of saying, um, I'll tell you. So I got my first that first job at University of Houston um, in 1999. Yes. And my starting salary was 27,000. And it was pretty low even then. So, you know, I really had to think about what to do. And again, this was before I learned to negotiate, um, even though I tried a little bit, you know, I did, I did push back on that a little bit. And, but here's the thing, I had talked to, you know, the person who was going to be supervising me. And I knew I was going to get some really great, you know, training. Um, at the time, I know um, the UH libraries were really big on getting professional development, especially for their early career librarians. And they also had a promise out there that they were going to start working on um, improving those salaries. Okay, um, and Houston is one of the least expensive big cities to live in, right? There's no state or local taxes and it was affordable, kind of. Well, I'm so glad that I took that job, that I was privileged not to, you know, have to focus so much on the actual salary at the time and within the next two years my salary had gone up like gosh almost almost 50 percent because they were working on it they had so they were they were serious about working on you know improving the salary but the conditions for the job and and the you know the environment was awesome so sometimes again we have to take a risk and sometimes we can't take a risk. I understand that. But, you know, again, figure out what's important for you and, you know, use that again as your non-negotiables and, and start working with other things and saying, okay, well, I can't get that. What else can I get? And what's important to you? What are the questions? Anything else? no one else has another question um I, I see that a lot of us have are on different walks of the program like some are just beginning and some are going to be graduating pretty soon kind of like what is the time frame for really like like getting into that job hunt so you can start like once you graduate um because I'm supposed to graduate in May and I've I really like last month I've really been that's when the rubber hit the road but I don't know if it's like supposed to be sooner than that or later than that like what's kind of your thought yeah I think you know recognition that the, the competition is fierce and um you know job opportunities pop up and go away you know randomly right you, you can't really predict um even you know I can't even say a blanket statement about academic jobs um, anymore. Because <laughs> some of them have, you know, um, they're open until filled and then some others have a closed date and all that. So I think what you want to really um, consider is will you be prepared for the position when start date comes? Okay. So let's say if you're, if you were applying for stuff in December, 
um, hopefully nobody wanted you to start until you're done, right? Till you, till you um, finish the program. Again, I would push, I would push folks to do that. Don't start a job while you're still in the program. Don't do that. <laughs> Again, ask them to wait. And that's one of those negotiating things. Um, but you want to sort of hit the ground running. So even if you start looking for a job in November or December, do you need to ask them, can you start in May? Now, the challenge is going to come in that some can wait and some can't. So again, in, in the academic arena, um, most universities are used to waiting for folks to close up their previous job, right? Um, other organizations, not so much. Public libraries, for instance, they're going to want to hire you. You know, after you get hired, they'll say, can you come next week? <laughs> right? So it really does um, vary. But I think one of the things why, why you should start early is so you can get practice. Okay, you want to get some practice applying, um, interviewing, and stuff like that. So, again, you want to be as prepared as possible. So I wouldn't do it before maybe the last semester um, of your program. But just, just do keep in mind, it could, if there are going to be fits and starts, um, do your homework. You got time to do your homework, you know, do your research, get prepared. Um, but yeah, it, it, that last semester, I think, is when you should be really digging in and trying to um, find a position. And again, Dr. Bishop is in here too. You got any, um, this is, I just want to say thank you so much. This is uh, my role as ALA advisor to say this is fantastic for everyone to hear. I know, listen to your advisors, get other input. Uh, if it's your aunt or whoever, whoever, you know, there's uh, one takeaway that I think might help is just to say everyone who's still doing this and doing great things and changing the world starts somewhere. And that first step can be the toughest. So just don't give up. Um, we're here to help and support and it might not be immediate. Um, so don't get discouraged and, you know, keep, keep in the game. Uh, if this is what you want to do with your life, um, just keep, keep applying and, um, an advisor is a forever reference. So just know the school is, is on your side the whole time. And we're here to help give other advice that doesn't fit in events like this. But I'm so glad that, so many people were able to attend and have the Dr. Patilla wisdom passed to them. Thank you. Thank you. And I just want to say, and thank you for almost for that segue. Um, yeah, you've heard from me today. Keep talking to other people. Okay. And again, those two courses that I mentioned, um, pick one and, and take a look at them. Again, they're free. Um, build that network, talk to a bunch of folks in, you know, or, and around the areas in which you want to work and, you know, hear what they have to say too about this. Okay. I think we're at time. Does anyone have any last minute questions? Anything really quick? Yeah, I'm just saying Deja's comment. <laughs> yeah, that's insane. When I read that, I was like, what? Oh my gosh. <laughs> good good luck. You need it. You you might need it more than the rest of us. Well, yeah, look, maybe negotiate some some time for do, for doing your schoolwork. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. Think about it. Okay. Well, I think we're all set. Many people have said it throughout the time today, but I'm going to wrap it up and say thank you very much, Dr. Patillo. We have been really excited to have this um, have this event um, and we're, we're happy that we were able to reschedule it and, and hopefully um, disseminate it to all of SIS for, for their future reference and help, help them get jobs too and get the best most out of it. Um, so thank you everyone for coming today. Thank you, Dr. Patillo and have a great rest of your night. See y'all later. My pleasure. Thanks, y'all. <laughs>